Hope everybody's doing okay today. We have an exciting one today. Um, tonight's podcast is brought to you by ACK, and they are playing a big part in our giveaway today. It is a PFD. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, PFD. And um, as you guys may or may not already know, if you don't, you're about to know now. ACK, of course, is my kayak outfitter. Uh, they are my home base for everything accessory-wise and kayaks. So big shout out to them, and we appreciate everything that they have done to us or for us rather. And um, yeah, man, it's gonna be a good show. You guys hang tight. We're gonna be giving away a uh, PFD, man. This is a, a legit PFD. It's NRS. It's the NRS Chinook OS. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Let's get this show on the road. If you guys are just tuning in, man, like, share it, toss it out there. We're going to get this rolling. Um, if you guys have not liked our, our Facebook page, I'll just let you guys know this now. If, if you guys aren't Facebook guys and gals, then that's perfectly fine. I get it. Um, but if you are, go and check us out. On our Facebook page, uh, it's facebook.com forward slash next level fishing TV. And the reason I say that is because some of our uh, giveaways are going to be sort of driven through that. And like the one tonight, so uh, we released a video a uh, day and a half ago. And uh, anybody who shared the announcement that we were going to be giving this away today uh, automatically was submitted for that. But um, I want to let you guys know it, it sort of all ties in, right? So October has been one of those, what we've been doing for this podcast and, and or really for the remainder as we move on every month, we'll choose like a subject, right? So this subject uh, for the entire month of October has been basically kayak fishing safety related. And, uh, you know, I, I figured we'll pick a perfect time, October, it's during, you know, going into November, it's that seasonal transition. And that's probably the really, I wouldn't say the best time. I made a post about this earlier saying that, uh, you know, the best time to talk about kayak fishing safety really is all the time, right? We should always be aware and, and discuss that and help our um, fellow colleagues in educating them as much as we can. But the best time to really just be reminded of it is during seasonal changes, specifically because they need a way. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll get into that here in a little bit, uh, David. Uh, <laughs> uh, specifically because these are our weather changes. And um, the game changes, right? The water gets cold. The temperatures get colder. Uh, you just have to change, adapt, wear different clothing. And we've sort of have combed this throughout the past three or four different podcasts going into October. So I don't want to sort of repeat what we've sort of gone over, but we'll just sort of continue that. Uh, feel free to go back and look at the past three podcasts. Uh, we took a little break last week simply because uh, I, I got some new stuff. Uh, which I was waiting for, and I didn't want to show you guys and or tell you guys what we were going to give away uh, without actually showing it to you. So uh, if you're just tuning in, we're giving away a uh, PFD, NRS Chinook, brought to you by ACK. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about it, man. This is the I'm going to show you guys this, all right? But this is the NRS Chinook. It's a uh, mesh black design, back design, I'm sorry, zippered front entry and six adjustable points, Quick access, interior organization for fishing, tools, and accessories, reflective ascents, ascents, and a radio pocket for open water safety. So, open water safety kind of ties into everything that we're doing this month. And uh, check this out, man. Let me show it up. Show it up. I mean, let me raise it up. This is her right here. Brand spanking you from ACK. Um... I have one that is similar. It's not the OS that, I, that you guys have been seeing, at least. I do have an OS. Uh, but the one that you've been seeing me wear is not the OS. Some of y'all may, may be asking, well, what's the difference? Now, OS technically stands, it's like their offshore version. But I want to make one thing clear about this jacket. Um, it really is just an all-water. Like, don't go after the OS just because you feel like it's only for offshore. This just has additional accessories for it. You know, obviously the offshore guys are always carrying a VHF radio like myself. You, you see it in all my videos, man. I have it clipped. This just has like a cool extra additional pocket for it just to kind of support that. 
Um, but it really is just an all water versatile PFD. Uh, NRS just really, they, they really keep the kayak angler in mind on everything they do. You can easily tell that. Uh, and what I mean by that is sometimes when you go to like these other places and you're looking at life jackets, sometimes they're just like, they're just not fishing ready. You know what I mean? They're just live jackets with very minimal pockets, kind of, uh, maybe something that you would, uh, take if you were going wakeboarding or, or skiing or water skiing. Uh, but NRS really does do a great job at uh, encompassing everything that we do, all of us as kayak anglers. So tonight we're going to be doing that. We've got close to 20 entries for this. If you did not get on this, I'm telling you guys right now. Actually, I'm making an announcement right now. Uh, our first sponsor for this podcast, uh, which is ACK. I've got great stuff coming for you guys, man. And it's all just for paying it forward. You know, let's have fun with it. Let's keep the conversation rolling. And I'll give you a little inside scoop. The kayak fishing industry really slows down during the winter months. Um, and uh, just it's mainly just the hardcore guys, man. You know, so one of the things I really wanted to do with this podcast is just to keep the conversation rolling. Talk about where we're at personally with the show, uh, what, what you guys can expect. Uh, the topics being safety. I, I think next week, you tell me what you guys want to discuss next week. We can talk about rigging, whatever. It don't matter. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards. I want to go into rigging um, and get you guys maybe some cool stuff for that. So we'll, we'll figure it all out as we go uh, and as we wrap up October. I think this is a lot. No, we still got one more weekend, I think. I don't know. I got to look at the calendar. calendar. Um, so, yeah, we've got close to about 20 guys and i have all these folks i'm going to show you guys real quick have all these folks written down from top to bottom in numerical order and the way we're going to do it tonight is uh, we're going to random draw we've released a couple episodes man since our last podcast i hope you guys enjoyed them <laughs> nah i don't i don't show exact no no way no way you guys already know how, how, how i work on that now let me let me speak on behalf of something uh, what's going on outdoors with Mars? Um, that that's an interesting little topic, man, and, and it's something that makes a lot of people. It can make a lot of people upset. It actually makes me a little bit upset, to be honest with you. You know, and there's there's different um, ways of going about this, right? So we've seen some damage in the YouTube world where they're just hitting up this this specific area, and all of a sudden it just gets clobbered by all this attention, right? Um, and it, it kind of, kind of sucks, man, for depending on what the area, where it is, who's fishing it, you know, so especially if there's guides involved, like it can get messy. I've seen it get messy. Um, I really, I kind of have fun with you guys when I make these videos, you know, you'll see like somewhere in South Texas or, um, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll put like just, just funny things. If you know where these areas are at, well then you know where they're at, but I'll, n I'll never actually tell you exactly where I'm at. I'm just going to tell you right now. Um, but like I said, if you do recognize stuff, you'll be like, oh, hey, I know where this guy's at. Or, man, it looks familiar. Um, but I never actually just reveal that because that kind of takes the fun out of it, right? It uh, For me, it's all about adventure kayak fishing, man. It, it's, it's going out, finding these areas that just aren't heavily infested. And um, I'm finding them just research random looking on maps you know sometimes i'm just closing my eyes throwing a dart at a map and let's go let's boogie woogie and um and that's what i want you guys to do you know i want you guys to go out there open up like experience the whole thing right it's like whenever you're cheating on a video game and you got unlimited life and ammo like it just isn't as fun uh it's part of the fun man with kayak fishing man it, it, it's it's there's Everybody can have their own little adventure and, and unique way of experiencing the sport, and uh, this that's the way I do it. Now, let's go back to what I was saying. Um, you know, this, if you're new to the show, uh, and if you like our content, you know, definitely subscribe, hit the notification button so that you know when a new video pops up. But we have, this show is layered, so you have the, um, the actual, like, full production adventure series, which is... Sometimes we only release those once a month, maybe even maybe even longer. Um, but then we have our filler content, which is behind the scenes, which is more kind of personal. You get to see the ins and outs of what it takes to get to that point. And then we have our direct line of communication, 
uh, content, which is this podcast. So uh, there's three layers to the show, man. It, it's full on production, uh, kind of vlog ish style behind the scenes. Um, and a lot of things that you would never know on a full production episode, you will actually find. So right now, if you guys are following us, uh, you know, we're looking for trophy trout. So the last two episodes, you've sort of seen the grinding, you've seen the realness of it and, uh, how much is, I'll tell you right now, I've already caught about 250 trout more or less. Um, and probably actually more. And guess what, man? The biggest one to date is 26 and three quarters. That's it. But that's not that's not worthy of a of a trophy. It's got to at least be 27. I think that's what they classify a trophy trout is at 27 and up. Um, so that just kind of goes to show you like the grind, you know. But it's fun, dude. I, I really do enjoy it. And I enjoy taking you guys along because um, that's real fishing, dude. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of times people were complaining, man, you guys need to release more videos. Well, Man, it, it ain't it, 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 it. It's not every day you just go out there and boom, you're you're slaying beasts and monsters. So we decided to to break the show up and to behind the scenes and and really take you guys. Uh, and hopefully you guys enjoy it, man. I mean, we I enjoy it. So, um, so yeah, this this month, man, uh, just be your buffering bad. Am I really, dude? If I'm buffering, um, let me see. I really shouldn't be because my internet is uh, uploading at warp speed right now. Well, anyway, it, it might square itself out. I Earlier I was buffing because my I was tied to too many things, so maybe you, you're getting that portion of it, but it'll catch up, and uh, you guys should be able to see smoothness here in a little bit um so yeah man these months are, are very important you know because uh, we have a few things right so some of you guys may be wondering why are we going after trout right now and um I, i'll let you guys in on why and you know and i'm writing actually an article about this and it's not just trout it's trout black drum reds um when i but specifically trout when i enjoy targeting trophy trout the best it's and this falls into the trout episodes of what all we're doing. It, it falls into, uh, it's going into those weather cycles and coming out of them, right? So we're going into winter, and what you'll find is um, trout are very hungry. Um, they start eating and eating and, and just finding their winter homes, just preparing for it, you know, because, um, I mean, these trout, they're, they're on a cycle, you know. They know. They know once winter comes, uh, a lot of bait's not going to be around. And if it is, it's going to be kind of scarce. So you, you start getting this big, uh, big movement right now, especially going into November. Once we start getting these fronts, um, and that all falls into safety. You know, you got to be real careful with fronts. Uh, some guys will pre-fish. Some some guys will go after. Uh, I've I've had it both. But what I really do is I, I sort of line it up with uh, moon phases and pressure. Um, and based off of the front so you take those two things and you kind of put it behind where those fronts if, if the stars align it could be a great day on the water so we'll get into a little bit more of that probably here on this next episode on this past one i, I put up like some barometer updates water temperature things you know the little gears or whatever um so something a little different and we'll, we'll definitely incorporate that in more episodes moving forward because a lot of the, the weather changes a lot right now. Sometimes it's calm. You could see on that video, it was super calm in the morning. I mean, you could drop a dime in the water. Don't do that, by the way. But you could drop a pin in the water. Don't do that either. Uh, and you could see ripples, right? Uh, but then you'll notice towards the end of that video, I was working off some current. And the wind whipped, man. It, it, it didn't look like it, but it was about a good 13 miles an hour. And it was definitely whipping kind of around this little peninsula and that's as far as I'll go as far as saying where I'm at. Um, and I was working some uh, some current trout, man. These trout were moving around. Some of them were sort of staging, you could tell. And the reason I could tell is because I was using my fish finder and my side scan, which is gold if you were uh, fishing deep water sort of blindly. Um, 
that was the hummingbird. I, I got a new transducer or a fish sounder because my Lorance fried on me. Real sad about that. Hopefully, I can get that fixed. Um, let's see what we got going on here. Got some. If you don't mind sharing spots, don't hurt. Or fish one bit. Oh, yeah. No, I don't mind sharing spots at all. I really don't if I know you. But I won't do that on YouTube um, just because I just don't want to. I've seen a couple areas that it. I don't even know how to say this. Like. It's been bad, dude. I've seen some areas get blown up to where it's just like, wow. It's like that picture that you see that meme online with all those dudes that are <laughs> lined up on a little creek right and they're just flinging their lures uh i mean not that crazy but pretty dang close dude um so i just don't i, I don't share that stuff um over over youtube I, 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 that's just not my style uh my style is just going out there finding something fishing it and just showing you guys the overall experience now if i know you and i actually fish with you which some of you guys in here i i do i don't mind showing you guys at all unless i'm competing against you or something um What's up, Slot? Yeah, it should be fine now, man. It opened up my, uh, I, I was accidentally tied to something on my uh, internet side, so. Um, but let me see here. It might actually drop right now. Let me, nope, it didn't, but I don't know why. Oh, there it goes. Okay, sweet. It's working now. Okay. So, yeah, that's where we're at right now, man. Um, and then the trout bite will, will pick up. Once you get into winter, it's still very good fishing, but it's a different type of fishing. That's where if you know your, your trout structure, if you know where the big grows like to hide out and where they will remain until things get uh, a little bit warmer, that's when you can specifically target certain areas, uh, which you would have to go out and do the work yourself. You know, uh, You can bring out your trophy trout out of those areas but the bite is just completely different man it's you, you got to be ready to cast 200 times you know you, you're gonna definitely feel like you're blowing your arm out um so uh, and i've caught trophy trout on both so i've caught them on three stages so i've caught them like now going into uh winter i've caught them in winter when it's super cold and i've caught them out which is my favorite time going into spring because what happens is all those trout that were hiding out and, and eating early, like right now, uh, man, they come out of the winter snap hungry, dude, hungry. So springtime is always like, man, dude, if you want to get one that's on a quicker eating cycle, that's the time to do it. Um, so, you know, I, I'm writing an article about that. I don't know if it'll get published or not. I, I really don't know. Um, if it does, look for it. It'll be on uh, Kayak Angler Magazine. And uh, we'll be talking a little bit about not just trout, but just big fish in general. And uh, it's going to be tied to our backyard. So if you guys are here in Texas and you want some some inside scoop, definitely look into that. Um, so, yeah, just be careful, man. You know, we, we're, we're going into this this time of year where you want to get your uh, your waiter situated, neoprene socks, um, you know, stay away from cottons. Wool is okay. Wool doesn't really retain water. Uh, you know, your dry fits, all that stuff, man, can 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 help you. And definitely, definitely always carry a dry bag with you. Put an extra set of clothes. Put it inside your hole and just forget about it. Oh, just leave it there. And in the event of an emergency or something happens, I mean, maybe it's not you. Maybe it's your the partner or somebody who you take out this winter flips you know because he or she is new forcing you to get out of your kayak to help out you know there's situations and scenarios that have sort of played out like that where it's not necessarily you making that mistake it's who you're fishing with or vice versa i mean it, it, the case in point here is just to be ready for this winter uh, of course your pfd you know that you should all everybody should have that um i'm not going to jam it down your throat you know i you know there's a lot of guys that do I think we've gotten a lot better. The culture here, especially in Texas, has gotten a lot better from when I first came in. Uh, when I first came in, a lot of us weren't, you know, and some of us still don't. I get it. That's their that's their right, you know, as long as they have it within arm's reach. They're inshore. They're comfortable. They know the waters real well. 
um, that's their right, you know, and that's perfectly fine. You know, there's, uh, I, I got friends like that and <laughs> I'm not going to call out your names, but you know, that's what it is. I just always wear it, uh, because of good practice and being a YouTuber, you know, you, you, you people are watching you that perhaps are thinking about coming into the sport. You don't want to give them a bad vibe. Like it, when fresh eyes look at you, uh, I think it's very quick for YouTubers to forget where we all came from, right? Simplicity. Uh, but when fresh eyes look at you, those are fresh eyes, dude. The first thing I want that person, he or she, to look at is what I'm wearing. So if I'm in an inch of water, you know, I'm wearing a life jacket uh, regardless for good practice and just to help represent the sport, the way, you know, the right way, to advertise it appropriately. So especially going into winter uh, and coming out of it. Now, one of the biggest issues about this time of year is uh, it's it's riding, you know, you want to get on a good uh, on a good bite. And unfortunately, you got to either get pre-front or sometimes go after if you want to keep things safe once it's done. But pre-front bite, man, dude, you got to be careful with that, man. You got to be careful with it, especially here in Texas. And the further south you go, the, the a little bit wilder it gets, man. The way the wind whips around and, and the northerns and it's just... I've, I've been in situations where my weather app, I use WindFinder. WindFinder Pro, but I've been in situations where it's wrong, where all the apps are wrong, even the weather channel's wrong, and it says the front should be here at 12 o'clock, and all of a sudden it comes in at, oh, I don't know, 10 o'clock, two hours earlier, and I position myself in a great area where I can catch fish and enough time to come back, and all of a sudden that front comes, and I'm not in a great position, and I'm struggling to come back, and it's cold, and the wind is blowing 25 miles an hour, and it's, it's scary, dude. It really is, man. It, it's it's really scary, and it, you just got to be ready. Got to be ready. So if you guys have any questions, fire them away. Let me go through this one more time. Man, my Astros, yes, dude. Man, you got to keep the faith, though, dude. Got to keep the faith, off the, off the faith. The faith. I've seen wilder things happen. You know what I'm hoping for, dude, is I'm hoping for um, a Boston repeat, man. <laughs> we'll fall 3-0. and No, we're not going to fall 3-0, and but if we do... That's what I'm hoping for, a Boston repeat, man. Um, I could go off on a rant on the Astros right now, but I'm not. I'm going to be good. Uh, you guys follow me on my Facebook page. I'm just joking, by the way, but a lot of you guys got upset <laughs> that I said if the Astros blow this lead that I was going to fry, deep fry a 30-inch trout. I got a couple PMs were like, you're not really going to do that, right? No, I'm not really going to do that, but I want to. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I agree, David. They need to wake up, man. Dog got my action cam action camera hat. Oh, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. Do we got any YouTubers in the house? If you got any YouTubers in the house, sound off, dude. Uh, Rude dog kayak fishing, I believe. Yes, go and check him out. We've got uh, outdoors with Mars, the homie. He's in the house. Um, we've also got Slot City fishing, putting out some killer content. Um, let me see here. What else we got here? I'm just running through these comments to see if you guys had any questions about anything, whether it's safety related or trout related. I made a detailed video with the map to our spots. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, if you can. Hey, I'm not here to say that you can't make a detailed map of your spots. It's all relative, dude. The problem with the reason I don't is because the spots that I fish, dude, they, they're not normal spots. They're not normal uh, and I'm not saying that you're fishing in a normal area. I'm not saying that you're a bad. I, I, I'm not saying any of that. I'm not, I, I mean absolutely no disrespect. But I've, I've fished enough to know the re, the repetitive nature, what these fish are doing. And some of these areas, man, you know, I, I tournament fish. I'm, I'm doing it more than I have in recent years. And I've, I've won some good money this year, dude, off tournaments in place. And I've been on the podium several times this year. Um, and it's helped out a lot. <laughs> I'm actually making more money <laughs> on, on winning tournaments than I am uh, with YouTube, or at least this year. Um, so I did good, but I really didn't hammer it, really. I only did like maybe, oh, I don't know, 10 tournaments, and I placed in about seven or eight of them, seven this year. Some of them were, were good, big bigger tournaments than others. Um, more than half of them were just, you know, little get-together grassroots tournaments. Um but at any rate, I, I, I 
film in a lot of those areas that I enjoy tournament fishing. So for me, what that what that would do is it would be bring a little bit more of a population over to these areas because some of them are very easy to get to. A lot of people overlook them. And, you know, I just don't want to sit there on a tournament and I've got some other guys out there just with cameras pointing at every which direction. And you know what? I'm happy to say, dude, I've never had anybody take an area or, or a YouTuber get in my way to where they're ruining my day. You know, I, I've taken other YouTubers to come and film or certain areas if they're struggling. But I always tell them, hey, man, well, here are my rules. I'll take you, but you got to abide by these rules. Um and that's just the way I go about it, man. I just respect the game, dude. Um, if you want to share your areas, that's fine. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. John Vasquez, what's up, brother? Slot City Fishing, good good now. Oh, okay. Kevin Willis, it's better now. Thank you, sir. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, my butt, my boy right here. I don't know if you guys can see him. This guy right here, Rally Cap. I haven't named him yet, but I will. You guys name him if y'all want. True story, you shared good info. I try, man. I try. Um, you know, I'm not a know-it-all, dude. I want to just come out there and say this. Uh, but I I share what I know now. <laughs> I'm not a know-it-all, but I share what I know now. <laughs> um, and some of that stuff could change, man. You know, I've actually, when I first started, I was corrected a lot by some very good anglers who enjoyed my content. Uh, who were just more knowledgeable about things. So my um, my attitude has changed a lot, you know, um, because of good fishermen. Some of them can be a little mean and, and rough around the edges, but I'm I'm fine with that. But a lot of them are turned into my me and my friends, and I've learned a lot from them. So uh, a lot some of the things that I talk about, especially the things that I discover or research, especially in this past last year, um, I try and make it a point to say, you know what, these are just things that we've learned. You know, it's none of this is set in stone. A lot of this is theory, but it's good to think about these things and this is what's working and how it all sort of ties in. Like, I'm not just saying this without giving you guys a reward. You know, obviously we're catching big kingfish, uh, trout, redfish. These things are working. These things the placing where we're at, you don't just do that with, with just getting running to luck. I mean, there's things that we've learned and we've put ourselves in good positioning. But a lot of the things, a lot of the specifics, a lot of times are theory. A lot of it's theory. A lot of fishing is theory. But it's just fun to talk about those little things, man. I, I really do have a I enjoy talking about the details. Um so I appreciate that, Slot City. You know, I, I try. Um, Albert Guzman, what's up, brother? Uh, <laughs> record fatalities in recent years opened my eyes. Yes, dude, you bring a very good point. Um, it opened my eyes about four years ago. Three three to four years ago from uh, a co- now it's It's talked about a lot more, but it's been bad for a while, especially here in Texas. I don't know why Texas is so bad. We it's I feel like... I feel like we have a lot more deaths than some of these other areas. And I know that Texas is like the kayak fishing grew up in just a few areas here in the U S. So it started, I could be wrong on, on the timing of this, but it started off in California. You got all those guys out there. Um, the old salts like Jim Salmon's, you know? Um, and then, uh, Ken Whiting, I think is, I, I, he's a whitewater, world champion i think they uh, run heliconia productions and then it hit the east coast you got all the guys in virginia uh who i work for now who eventually developed the kayak angler magazine uh rick burntley um kayak kevin rob Choi. those are the guys that's when i picked it up i picked it up from jim and the east coasters and when i saw those guys fish i was like Whew. I got to get in on this. You know, these guys are bringing on slops, dude. Catching things. This is when people didn't even know you could catch selfish on the kayak. This is when people didn't even know you could bring in a 63-inch redfish and slab it on your kayak. You know, I mean, it's just incredible what these guys were doing. They were doing it with a VHF 
I mean, VHS cameras. This is before GoPro. And then it hit Florida. And then the offshore world just blew up with the Extreme Kayak Fishing Series. But in between the east and west coast up north, in between the Florida and Texas, like when it came down, Texas, I think it was like Cali and then Virginia, east, upper east coast and Texas sort of blossom at the same time. But when you look at that, those main communities, including Florida, those are the big meccas, right? Um I just feel like we got a lot more deaths than everybody, dude. We really do, and I don't know what it is. Um, I don't think we've really found that smoking gun, man. It's just uh, we just need to do better as a community. That's all I can say. I think we'd be wasting our time if we try to find the answers. I think we just need to do better as a community, talk a little bit more about it. That's one of the things I was hoping to get out of with this podcast is to keep the conversation going even on the downtimes. Even in the winter when the market is at a low, uh, we can still talk about it. And, man, I I don't know. Um, there's a few things that I've said to a few people that I felt like, you know, I, I feel like it it's, could have saved somebody's life or that situation because I spoke out a, a little bit about it could have saved that person's life in that moment. I've got a few friends that I felt like uh, that and, and and I go back and I think I'm like man if I never had that conversation with this dude you know I wonder what would have happened you know I just I, I fear my biggest fear for me as a YouTuber is bad practice that could lead to somebody doing something stupid and them losing their life and then I almost feel like I have bad blood on my hands you know what I'm saying especially the type of fishing I do it's a little bit more of a extreme setting so <gasps> anyway it's kind of yeah but good point yes kayak deaths are at an all-time high and it's going to continue to grow as the population continues. Um, let me see here. Picked up a good snook while trout fishing at Arroyo City yesterday. I need to get on some of those that snook, man. Come on, red fishing. That, um, down there in South Padre, man, you guys have some good snook. Full armor bass and NLTV, how are you, bro? God bless you. Fishing brothers, God bless you, man. I've been watching your YouTube channel, and I've been watching you catch those bass. Holy smokes, dude! Like it doesn't matter how big of a bass you catch, you you are an exciting person to watch, man. Um, true story. You sh oh, I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm. I accidentally went up and repeated some stuff. Um, oh, it keeps moving. It keeps moving. Okay. Um, think one big safety thing is know your limits. Yeah. You should know your limits, and when you know your limits, the problem with knowing your limits is some of us will um, decide to push those limits. Um, that's the problem, dude. You definitely want to know your limits, uh, but just be careful on how you push your limits, and a good example of that is like uh, the windows that I fish sometimes when I go offshore. There's been times where I'm just like, what am I doing, dude? Why am I trying to clear a five footer <laughs> to go fishing? You know, but I just, that's just the angler who I've become, you know, and I, I try and just be as safe as I can. Um, buddy Todd Johnson out there, he, he, I think he said it best, you know, you cannot prepare for everything. Uh, and, and I think that holds true. You, you can prepare for everything, but you cannot prepare for it when it when things you can't you just can't prepare for everything there's so many different things that can go wrong especially in the offshore setting you just got to be as ready as you can be man so um yeah storage is key for uh life jackets i think you know life jackets have come a long way in recent years there's really no excuse now they make some of the most comfortable ones some of them you don't even feel like you're wearing them you can strap them around which i'm not a fan of but it is you know um, sorry I'm late. What's up, bro? Bobby T. What is going on, homie? Oh, not much, man. We're just sitting here talking away. We're talking a little bit about the giveaway today. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, got a little, uh, stirring the pot a little bit. I've got a, a world record speckled trout on the TKF forums on Facebook. If you guys want to see what a world record speckled trout looks like, recently caught. Go and look at the TKF fishing forums, Texas Kayak Fishing Forums on Facebook, and you will see 
what a world record trout looks like. And then you can holler back at me and tell me what you think. Uh, I fished a lot of the tournament guys over there and never blew up their spots. Mondo, Ernesto, Luis Hossel. Man, those are all good guys and homies, dude. Yeah, it's just all about respect, dude. There's different layers of respect. A lot of YouTubers come into it and they're not fishermen. That's the problem. Some of them are. Most of them are. But a lot of them don't. So they, they kind of clash with the actual culture of it. You know, the, it's very hard to find YouTubers that are actual, like, embedded fishermen. It's, it's usually like, I found YouTube. I got inspired by this guy who's fishing. Now I'm going to do it. And there's a lot of them out there. I mean, there's a lot of good ones, but there's a lot of also... So I think the important thing is just to stay true to who you are. Um, you know, if you're new to fishing and you just love the whole kayak fishing, filming, YouTube, you want to build this fan base, my advice to you would just be stay true to who you are. Don't don't pretend like um, you've been doing it for years when you haven't. Um, let that be your pitch to your channel and grow up with your audience. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys make that mistake. And you can see it very, very easily to see. Uh, if you are faking it till you make it kind of thing. Um, Texas, man. Texas. I will say it's still luck, but you can drastically increase your luck with knowledge. Absolutely, dude. 100%. 100 Man, slots of fishing is just nailing these points right now. Um, Bobby T. I think people are thinking that their skill level is higher than they really are without knowing their kayaks capabilities. Ultimately getting themselves in trouble. That's a great point, Bobby. That's a great point, dude. Um, I try my best to express that. I just don't, it's tough for me to say that, you know, some people, if I say that, People think, oh, well, this guy's got a big head on his shoulder, you know. I, I just try and put that. I try what you just said is better coming out of your mouth than it is me. But um, I try and I, I release a lot of little mini videos on on social media, and um, those are some of the topics that I I'm open to discuss about, you know. Especially with the, the surfing, a lot of these guys freak out at some of the swells and the surf that I come in on. And I'm all open to saying, you know what, it's not as easy as you think, dude. It really isn't, man. There's a little bit of physical conditioning. There's grinding. There's more failure than successes. Um, and even when you are you get the hang of it, you're still not good enough, man. You always will be second to Mother Nature, dude. So that's a really good point, man. I'm glad you said that. Not understanding and being able to read and protect your forecast. That's tough, dude. That's something you guys need to really look into and understand. Understand, a lot of people don't really understand how to read weather apps because it's broken up and it confuses people, especially the ones like WindFinder. A lot of people don't understand it because it's broken up in time. So when you look at it, it's like noon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 p.m., 7, 8, 9, 10. And they, they see all this and they're just like, what in the world is going on here? What does this mean? Look at each time and try to understand every reading that's on there. The wind, the direction, and what I always do is I look for the biggest transition when I look down an app that's broken up every day by time. So if it's from noon to midnight and you got a long string, look at all the wind. Look how it, look how it's changing throughout the day, throughout the night. Also look at the wind direction. Is it going this way and all of a sudden it's going that way from morning to afternoon? Find that trend. Try and figure out all that. If the wind, when that wind changes, is it gusting? When that wind changes, am I putting myself in a good position to come back home? Um, just a couple of things to think about on that. Um, full armor bassin. Yeah, man. Keep doing your thing. Full armor, full armor bassin. Keep doing your thing, man. Um, keep doing your thing, brother. Terminants will make you do stuff you don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. It depends on how serious you take them, right? Um Tournaments can really change an angler, dude. I've seen it happen, man. It, 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 can, it can unhumble you and make you a little... A little... It can make anglers arrogant. I hate to say that, but it can make anglers arrogant. You, you got to be careful, man. Just 
understand that it's we're all here. I mean, dude, <laughs> like you're not on ESPN. You know, none of us are. It doesn't matter how many tournaments we win or if we win $20,000, $30,000. Um, you know, the industry is not at a professional level yet. A lot of people think it is, but I don't really don't think it is, man, because the competition isn't there. Uh, it isn't there. Now, if, if you you can make a living off of kayak fishing, and I'm not talking about YouTube, I mean just tournament-wise, um, if you can make triple figures as a kayak angler close to it and sustain your life and be backed by sponsors that are paying your way, who are endorsing you, and you know people are writing about you, people are doing all this stuff, um, I think... The closest guys that we have are the Bassmaster, uh, you know, that, that those guys I do consider professional, the guys on the boats. I think the kayak anglers, unfortunately, we're just a notch below, but I think we're getting there. Um, I think we're getting there. It's just, it's, it's a different animal. The politics is different. Kayak fishing is a hard, I mean... Fishing in general is a hard sport for a lot of people to watch. It may be a niche sport for a very long time. It's a recreational sport. It's a great family sport. But in a competitive scene, it's going to take a lot of creativity and a bizarre format, I think. This is just my personal thought, to really make it worth watching. Um, video games had the longest time trying to figure that out, and... They figured it out. <laughs> they are nationally televised, man. Uh, I saw that. Uh, man, which one was it? I forget the name of that game. Uh, I, I, I saw it was a team from Japan versus the U.S. And they were on um, NBC. I don't know. They were on some big, big channel. And I was like, wow, dude. Video games have come a long way. So, yeah. All right, guys. So, let's get into it, man. Um, <clears throat> okay. Again. Uh, if you guys are just tuning in, the big announcement today is uh, we just the podcast itself has picked up its first sponsor. Uh, we'd like to thank thank ACK Fishing or ACK Austin Canoe and Kayak. Um, and again, for those of y'all who don't know, obviously I'm wearing a shirt. I'm on their fishing team. Um, they've decided to help what we're doing, kind of put everything back. Everything that I get, man, I put it back. On, in y'all's hands because and I want to structure it and tie everything to what we're talking about so today we're talking about safety actually all month we've talked about safety and what better way to finish October than to give you something that's safety related and uh, that bears a good message to uh, to anybody who's entering the sport whether you or or if you've been in the sport and just need uh, to get rid of your stinky PFD <laughs> here you go man we've got a brand new one tags and everything this is uh, the NRS Chinook OS. This is not your typical PFD, aka life jacket. This is about a hundred and thirty nine dollar life jacket. Um, this is a legit jacket, dude. All right, so we didn't go to the dollar store and pick up this jacket. <laughs> <clears throat> so this is the jacket. Now we're gonna be doing more of these. All right, I want to let you guys know that we've got more stuff on the way. I will announce what next month's topic will be as we go into uh, winter, as we head into winter. And I'll let you guys know what we're going to be giving away, uh, at, whether it be every week or once a month. I have no idea yet. We'll figure out all those details. But the way that people got into this, just so you know, uh, I encourage you guys to go and check out um, our Facebook page. It's... Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Next Level Fishing TV. There's a couple copycats, okay? But there's not like a, they have a few hundred followers on there. It's just get the one with our logo. It's got about 23,000, I think, followers on there. So that's the one. Don't, because I've already had a guy say that, well, he hadn't seen content or whatever. And he was on the wrong page. So, um, I've got everybody listed who entered. The way you entered this big prize giveaway from ACK is uh, we had a video a couple days ago, or a, a banner announcement saying what we're going to do, what we discussed this month, and anybody who shared it, tagged a friend, uh, automatically was submitted into this. So that's how those people got in this drawing. Uh, 
we give away things every week, by the way. So if you miss this one, we'll see you next week and we'll we'll discuss that. But definitely keep an eye on the Facebook and Instagram and all that because that's where I do a lot of the quick on the fly announcements. That's sort of our like engagement zone. And um, then we bring it all back over here to YouTube. So what I'm going to do is I've got the random numeral generator and I've got everybody listed. So uh, I've got one through 18 here um, and I'm going to go ahead and click this. Where are you ready? Can I get it? Hang on. I need somebody to give me a drum roll. Somebody give me a drum roll. All right, here we go. Tell me when to stop. Tell me when to stop. All right, there we go. I just clicked it. So there should be a number on there. Right after these messages. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. Okay, so the number here is four. One, two, three, four. Marcio Mar Martinez. Marcio, haven't you won something with us before? That's number four right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Marcial. Let's see if you guys can see that, but that's the list right there. That's number four, just so you know. Wow. Wow. No, it wasn't. It, it was somebody else who, I don't know. Marcio, I feel like. I feel like you've won. I feel like you've got the lucky hand here, dude. So congratulations to Marshall <laughs> Marcel Martinez for winning this uh, PFD. It is a NRS Chinook OS, uh, which stands for, they say offshore, but I'm telling you right now, this is not just specifically an offshore PFD. This is an all-water PFD. It just has some accommodations, uh, like a little extra pocket to hold a VHF radio. And um, Mark Garcia, what's going on? Mark's in the house, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's what, sort of why they call it the um, the OS. But like I said, dude, this this jacket doesn't matter if you're offshore, inshore. It's all encompassing jacket. Um, you know, I want to say thanks to to ACK man. I I cannot say that enough. You know, and. Moving forward, as we pick up more sponsors, that's one of the main things that I am, am really just, how do we get a good conversation going with you guys, and how do we tie that all together and put awesome stuff in y'all's hands and have fun while we're doing it, dude? For me, that is my reward. So, it's a pleasure to be able to do this on this platform for you guys. You guys have been with us for a good while, some of y'all. So, um, you know, I could sit up here. And draw tears, but I'm not, because I ate my manwich today. And Chris Castro does not draw tears, unless he catches a selfish. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding with you guys. <laughs> nah, actually, I am kidding with you guys, because I would never draw tears. Dude. I got way too much pride to be crying on YouTube. Are you kidding me? All right. So if you guys have any questions, man, we're going to do a little bit of Q&A and then we'll wrap it up. Um, I will announce our next topic. I'm leaning towards rigging. I'm not too sure yet uh, for next month, sorry, uh, the topic. So if we talk about rigging and if that's something you guys feel like, hey, man, yeah, cool, let's do it. Uh, then let's sort of run with it. Give me your guys' thoughts. You can send me an email. If you guys have some cool ideas of a good topic that uh, we could tie in. Shoot them our way, man. Next little fishing TV at gmail.com. Uh, we are revamping our website, by the way. We'll announce that once it's done. So uh, we we have a lot of website traffic. I, I didn't realize how much website traffic we get until about a month ago. And holy smokes, dude. Um, a lot of people are reading some of the blogs and stuff like that that we have on there. So we're kind of revamping it, bring it up to date. And uh, just kind of uh, just expect some some updates on that. And I, I, uh, I'm i excited to see where that goes. Um, yes, Mars Outdoor. I still need to get you that shirt. Um, I, I'll place the order when I get back from Houston. Uh, and then I'll get that going. I haven't had a chance to order that for you. Uh, Rings sounds cool. Yeah, congrats. Keep up the good work, bro. See you next week. Thanks, Bobby T. Thanks for tuning in, man. 
Um, so if you're tuning in and if you want to catch up, go ahead. There's three different, actually there's four different playlists that we have here. The show, it, that is, uh, the show is separated by our adventure series, which is the, what we always lead up to. Then you have, uh, the best of it. It's what we feel like is some of our best content. Some of the stuff that has gotten the more, more views, some of the things that have, some of our videos that have won awards, uh, we have a good handful of those. And then we have uh, our behind the scenes, which is our filler content, keeps you guys up to date. And then we just added a new one, dude. Uh, well, two new ones. The one you guys are on right now, you're watching this podcast or podcast has a specific pay, uh, playlist. And then we added a new one and it's called Old School. And if you want to see some, like, how far we've come, to, <laughs> it's it's not pretty. I'm telling you guys right now, it's not pretty. Uh, it may not even make sense. You may feel like you're tripping on some stuff, but uh, <laughs> some of it's funny, dude. I, I can't even watch it anymore, but uh, we put all of our old school videos uh, from when we first started, and um, they're all there. So if you ever want a good laugh at uh, Ruben Pena... Ram Garcia, uh, Kai Hunter, uh, myself, and um, knocking on my door, and uh, who else? Oh, um, Jeremy. Those are some of the originals that uh, help start all this, man. It, it's you'll see a lot of those guys. So anyway, I just want to let you guys know that. Um, Love you guys. Y'all have a wonderful weekend, man. We'll see you next week, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can expect possibly one or two more quick behind-the-scenes episodes before then. We've been releasing like three videos a week. What in the world is going on here? Uh, if you have not seen those videos, go back and see a couple of our latest ones. Two trout videos back-to-back. -back. Um, next week, I'm trying to wrap up uh, some ACK demo stuff. And I'm also trying to wrap up uh, uh, Lake Calavera's uh quick behind the scenes video i think it's a real cool uh little story that we have there so y'all have a wonderful week y'all be safe on the water and um just know your limits pfd up and congratulate congratulations again to mariciel martinez please get with me on shipping so i can get this out to you asap guys it's been a pleasure have a wonderful week